and welcome to this public meeting of the Consumer Product Safety Commission. Today, the commission will vote on the staff's proposal for mid-year amendments to our FY22 operating plan, as well as adjustments to our ARPA spending plan. Before we start, I'd like to prefer, excuse me, confirm that all my colleagues are in attendance. Commissioner Biacco? Here. Commissioner Feldman? I'm here, thank you. Commissioner Trumka? I'm here, good morning. Right. Good morning, welcome everybody. Uh, the fiscal uh, year 22 operating plan is adopted in September 2021, contemplating a significant increase in our appropriations consistent with the president's proposed budget. Unfortunately, the funding did not come through and we ended up with an appropriations funding level that is essentially flat from last year. I want to thank the CPSC staff for the work they put into this mid-year proposal and for the efforts to keep the commission's mission front and center while addressing another year of limited funding. Now we will start with questions for the staff, if there are any. We have several staff members who are present in the event there are questions. With us are Dwayne Ray, the CPSC's De Deputy Executive Director, James Baker, the Chief Financial Officer, Austin Schlick, her General Counsel, and Alberta Mills, our uh, Secretary. Each commissioner will have five minutes for questions and we'll have multiple rounds if necessary. After the questions are complete, we'll then consider amendments. Please remember that it's not appropriate to receive or discuss any legal advice given to us by the general counsel's office outside of a closed executive session. Um, at this point in time, we're going to turn to questions. I am actually have no questions at this point, so I will turn to Commissioner Biaco. I have no questions. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Feldman. I also have no questions. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Tomka. I'll make it a clean sweep. No questions. All right. Having no questions, staff is excused and we'll move to consideration of the package. Uh, before putting the matter as proposed by the staff to a vote, we will now entertain amendments uh, to the uh, that any of the commissioners may propose. Um, I'm going to start with myself with a proposed manager's amendment. Uh, the manager's amendment was uh, in response to interest expressed by Commissioners Trumka and Feldman to move up the population attributable risk and the FOIA support projects up in the mid-year list. Uh, if adopted, this amendment would move the population attributable risk and the FOIA support projects up higher on the list to be funded within the first $2 million worth of projects to accomplish this. Um, a few projects would move lower down, including um, electric heaters, uh, more hazard mitigation and youth ATV projects. Is there a second for the managers? Second. second. Thank you. Um, would anybody like, well, I'll go in order. Commissioner Miyako, would you, do you have any questions or comments? I do have a comment. Thank you, Chair. Um, you know, this is a very difficult meeting to go through. I, uh, as, as Alex, as you pointed out, we are at a flat budget. We had hoped for more. Um, but even though we um, had hoped and planned for more, even that amount was significantly low. Uh, when you look at the fact that last year, 2021, there was more than 4.5 trillion trillion uh, dollars in retail sales, most of which falls uh, underneath our jurisdiction. And we find ourselves here today making tough choices about projects, all of which are necessary uh, for the safety of the American population. We find ourselves in a situation where we're cutting and re reordering and trying to get the most out of a, a very small uh, amount of money. And so um, I, I, I just I, I want to make clear that I'm disappointed that we have to be in this position at all. I think it's difficult for all of us. We all see something that we'd like to get done. Frankly, I think all of this and more should get done. Um, but we're not here to dispute each other's points of view. At least I'm not. Um, we are just trying to make the most of our small, small amount of money. And from that perspective, um, I, I will uh, weigh in today, but that's, that's, I don't have any additional questions. Thank you, Commissioner Biacco. I couldn't have said it better myself. Um, Commissioner Feldman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, I, I don't have any questions. I, I, I want to thank you and, and your, your office for uh, working to include uh, my first amendment uh, in this manager's package uh, to, uh, to raise on the priority ranking uh, the FOIA project. I think that's important uh, and I, I look forward to, to supporting this amendment. Thank you. 
Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Trumka. Uh, you know, I, I agree with you uh, entirely, Commissioner Bianco. It is a tough spot that we're in. I appreciate all the common ground that, that the four of us have found. So, thank you. So, with that, I don't think anybody else has any additional questions or comments. So, I'm going to call the vote on the manager's amendment. Um, Commissioner Biaco? I vote yes. Commissioner Feldman? I vote yes. Commissioner Trumka? I vote yes. I vote yes as well. And that makes four uh, yeses. And so the amendment is approved. Um, at this point in time, I don't have any additional amendments. So I'm going to go in uh, order of seniority. Commissioner Biaco, do you have any amendments? I do not. Thank you. Commissioner Feldman, do you have any amendments? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to call up for consideration uh, Feldman 1. Um, offering this amendment in response to a specific request from our inspector general to provide his office the necessary resources uh, to achieve it, its critical mission. And while I recognize that some outside groups have suggested that we can set aside our inspector general recommendations, I strongly disagree with that sentiment. The recommendations that are made by OIG aren't advisory in nature, but are integral to a strong functioning agency. And the IG tells us that he needs an additional full-time staffer to conduct proper agency oversight and simply providing contract dollars won't accomplish these needs. And while the OIG doesn't get a blank check, I think we need to rely on the recommendations of our team leaders who understand best what their particular needs are. And this is true by the way, of all of our team leaders, such recommendations aren't controlling, but they are persuasive. So as my colleagues are, are no doubt aware, the IG's office was scheduled to have eight full-time equivalent employees or FTEs as we call them in his office beginning this fiscal year. And the purpose of these positions is to conduct investigations and audits and oversight to ensure that CPSC remains on mission and honors our obligations to Congress and to the American public. And while some listening to today's proceedings might not be familiar with inspectors general, the IG is essentially the conscience of, of many of, of, of these organizations and CPSC is no different. OIG's mission critical work is designed to identify waste, fraud and abuse, such as the commission's 2019 data breach, which was a massive failure leading to the IG's report that identified so many issues that still need addressing. And simply put, uh, OIG is here to keep us honest. It's this critical oversight role that helps provide Americans some level of assurance that CPSC, from the most junior staffers to the commissioners ourselves, are working each day to protect the, the, the public from unreasonable hazards and doing so in a uh, responsible manner. This is particularly important because we're just now starting to spend down the $50 million that Congress gave the commission as a result of the serious failures during the pandemic. This is why I'm so passionate about this amendment. I appreciate that we're considering $150,000 in new contract authority, but OIG stated publicly that he can't responsibly spend this money and would offer and re reject it if it's offered. It, it shouldn't be lost on anyone that a government official telling us that he can't responsibly spend money is unique. That's quite a statement. That's something that never happens in government and, and probably something that, that isn't said enough. So instead, OIG has said that for this very modest sum of money, he can find uh, an additional career auditor for his office. Moreover, he's told me and my colleagues that OIG is willing to hold any other offices harmless for this position in future years and is willing to relocate other parts of his budget, including converting his other funding uh, for contracts and, and training to salaries. And, and that's exactly what this amendment would do. Uh, I'd, I'd like to commend our uh, IG for his candor and willing to work to achieve his goals without affecting other offices. I think that this is a prudent and responsible posture given our, our current fiscal reality. Uh, in what should have been the most favorable of funding years, uh, Congress and the White House basically gave us no new money. We flat funded and I, I realize that increased oversight is always uncomfortable, but in my time at the agency, I, I know how critical a fully empowered OIG is uh, that's why I'm offering this amendment and would welcome my colleagues' uh, uh, support. Uh, I, I would uh, pause here and, and answer any questions that, uh, that that you all may have. Actually, before you do that, I would ask if there's a second. And I'll second it. 
Um, having seconded, I'll uh, we'll turn to consideration questions from uh, commissioners and um, I, I can start myself. And first of all, you know, I want to thank my fellow commissioner for the amendment and for raising this concern. It's a serious one. Um, OIGs have an extremely important role in um, agencies, making sure that there is prevention of waste, fraud, and abuse. Um, and at the same time, it's the job of the commission to sort of balance out all the different interests, as um, Commissioner Feldman has said. You know, as, as Commissioner Bianca pointed out, this year uh, Congress has provided us with a much lower final appropriations level than the operating plan anticipated and that we had hoped for. And honestly, that I think that this commission deserves, um, but that is what we have to live with. And within that, that uh, funding that we had requested, there was a large number of uh, FTEs that we hoped to add, including one for the, the um, IG's office. As a matter of fact, you know, originally the commission had looked to add, you know, 68 uh, FTEs for the, um, the ARP through the ARPA fundings, and through this proposal from staff, now we're looking to to reduce that to cap it at the 46. That's 22 less employees that we're talking about um, in in general uh, from what we had previously hoped to do, and which I think would be good for for the American people. So I, I sympathize with the IG's request for additional resources, and it, it is similar to what we're hearing from a lot of the different divisions that we work with at the agency, because they all could do more with more resources. And it comes to us to, to balance that out. How do we balance out, um, you know, the, the safety work that we do? How do we balance out the oversight? Um, and, you know, the, the IG's argument that he need was that he needs particular resources for oversight of the ARPA funding program uh, funds that are that are being spent, and the and oversight of that will be important. But given the, the limited appropriations and that the ARPA funding is actually projected to run out in 25, we need to shepherd our resources carefully. In, in good conscience, I can't support adding a permanent FTE to our payroll for oversight of ARPA. When the ARPA projects are necessarily limited in duration due to the nature of their funding. So, you know, I believe that staff's recommendation of approach of adding additional uh, mid year contract dollars is responsible and appropriate alternative to funding a, a permanent FTE at this point in time. Um, and the use of contractor auditors is consistent with past practices or current practices. Uh, I believe of 18 audits, the OIG has described as ongoing work. Eight of them are currently do done by contractors, and uh, despite the, the the concerns of continuity being being raised, many of the contractors that we use come uh, go continue from year to year, and and I would assume and urge the, the IG to use a, a similar approach in the contract dollars that the commission is is proposing. Now, don't, don't get me wrong; that the IG's work is important. The commission has recognized this over the past decade. Um, while the CPSC's overall budgets increased about 20% during the last 10 years, the commission has dedicated you know, doubling the budget of the IG's fund at the same time. So, you know, for the result, the IG is, is funded and staffed comparably, in some cases, more fully funded than IG offices in, in comparable agencies. But so for these reasons, I, I can't support this amendment, but I feel confident in working with our IG to be able to manage his, his staff and resources, including the additional contract dollars in the mid-year to prioritize and, and carry out the audits of the agency, including ARPA spending. So, but I thank you again for raising the, this issue. Um, with that, I would turn to Commissioner Shibiakio if you have any questions or comments. Yes, thank you. Um, uh, Commissioner Feldman, thank you for the amendment. I, uh, I think it was well stated. I uh, thank you both for your comments. I think they are all uh, right on point. It pains me to not be able to support any request for funds that ultimately go to the bottom line, which is you know uh, pursuing our mission and keeping the the American public safe from unreasonable risks that do develop from time to time. And every project that we're going to have to put aside and every request for an FTE and every dollar that we cannot spend hurts our bottom line. And so it's, it's been pretty tough. I, 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 I have decided not to support this amendment 
um, for all the reasons that um, have been stated so far. And one additional one, I think our OIG does an incredible job, um, and I'm going to have faith that even without the additional resource, they will continue to do um, the excellent job that they've been doing. Um, not to reflect any, you know, anything on on that office, or that we don't appreciate that. It's just that where the, the funds, I can't state this enough, are just so thin. So thank you. Um, I agree with both comments, uh, both sets of comments that I heard today. I couldn't really add much more, um, but that's where I stand on this particular one. Thank you, thank you Commissioner. Commissioner Trumka. First of all, you know, thank you for your passion for oversight. You know, uh, Commissioner Feldman, you know, I share it. I, I came from the House Oversight Committee. Um, waste, fraud, and abuse is, is something I took great pride in, in going after, and I know the IG does as well. So, um, I, I agree with my with my fellow commissioners that I can't support this amendment. But when we work together to drastically expand our budget, as we will do in in coming years, hopefully, I will support uh, an expansion here as well. So, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, Turn back to you, Commissioner Feldman, if you want to have any uh, final words before we consider. Appreciate the, the input from from my colleagues. I'm I'm disappointed to hear the responses, uh, in, in part because this is not a budget buster uh, amendment. This was specifically crafted to hold harmless other offices, and uh, and and to the, the the costs for the additional the additional FTE here. Uh, would be paid out of existing funds that uh, that, that that are uh, uh, appropriated to, uh, to to the inspector general uh, via allowing him a conversion authority to take existing contract dollars uh, to to pay for any additional costs that would be associated in the out years with the purpose of hiring uh, an additional FTE. Moreover, uh, Mr. Chairman, you mentioned that um, that uh, that that this. Request is primarily geared at, at at ARPA oversight, and while that's certainly something that the uh, Inspector General uh, plans to conduct oversight on, that's not the uh, the, the sole justification for uh, the, the, this request, as I understand it, at least as it's been explained to me by the Inspector General, uh, that this would be an additional staffer to conduct audit work uh, that that would that would uh, uh, exceed the 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 life of uh, the ARPA funds here at the agency, uh, and this is a need that uh, that 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 is existing. Uh, and that will exist even after FY 25. Uh, hearing that uh, that that there, there's likely not a majority to support this amendment, uh, I believe that we'll live the fight another day. Uh, and this is something that uh, I hope that we can address in a future operating plan or mid year. Uh, so I appreciate that. I, I have no further comments. Um, thank you, Commissioner Feldman. I, I take that as withdrawing the amendment, which I appreciate and would definitely continue to work with you on this. I mean, I think that he... no, uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I would ask for the yeas and nays. Okay, sorry, I didn't understand what you were saying then. Um, then I will ask for the yeas and nays. We're starting with Commissioner Biacco. Um, I have to vote no. Commissioner Feldman. Sorry, I didn't hear you. I think you're muted. I assume yes on your amendment. I'll I make vote, it I vote yes, thank you. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Tomka. No. And I vote no as well. That would make uh, one yes, three no's, and the amendment then fails. Um, Commissioner Feldman, did you have other amendments? I do not at this time. Thank you. Uh, then Commissioner Trumka, do you have any amendments? I do, thank you. I, I'd like to introduce uh, two amendments, and, and I think both of these came about thanks to a, a request from Commissioner Feldman, and he asked for the ideas that staff considered but didn't include in their mid-year recommendations, and that list was full of great ideas from staff. So thank you uh, to Commissioner Feldman for requesting it. Um, the first amendment embraces one of those staff ideas by investing in technology to help us do our jobs better. The amendment would allocate 2.2 million of ARPA funds to migrate from SAS 9.4 to SAS VIA. And that's a substantial upgrade to the system that agency staff uses to store and analyze the agency's data on consumer products and injuries. In ARPA, Congress directed us to fund improvement to the commission's data collection and analysis systems. This investment does that. SAS VIA expands our data analysis capabilities and allows us to run analyses significantly faster. 
and it comes with the ability to mine text data. It'll, it will allow patterns to be discerned easier, including harms to disadvantaged groups. It will allow us to see if injuries differ by things like socioeconomic status or race or age or gender or anything else. Uh, and all of this means we can gather more data and analyze it more efficiently. So it's a direct answer to Congress's directive. It's also a one-time investment that will be beneficial for years into the future. So I'd ask for your support on the amendment. Thank you, Commissioner. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you. Um, now move to questions on, so you can take these in order. You mentioned two amendments, so starting with the SASFI amendment, and then we'll move on to the, the other amendment of yours, um, to which I will recognize, recognize myself. Um, and so uh, again, I thank you uh, for introducing this amendment and bringing up this uh, issue. Um, the commission is currently undergoing a broad overhaul of its data systems, as you pointed out, uh, much at the direction of Congress as well. And this is an important component. Um, you know, at one level, I recognize that we've been talking about the limited resources and worry about putting more obligations in ARPA, given the need for these funds to be uh, used to pay staff. Um, but recognizing that this will keep within the, the framework of uh, making sure staff is funded through the uh, early months of FY25 uh, from the insurance given by the, the chief financial officers, um, it doesn't actually move the, the, the funding tipping point um, into FY24. And so I feel more comfortable with the amendment that's coming up coming forward, especially given that the capabilities that the SASFI offers, which will enable us to strengthen our analytical work. Um, funds will allow us, as you pointed out, to more quickly take full advantage of cloud computing, artificial intelligence, and machine learning technologies, and help us mine text and large pools of data in a more comprehensive way. And we'll be able to make imputations about the differential harms impacting populations, looking at rural areas versus urban areas, different income levels, race, ethnicity, um, in ways we haven't been able be able to look at them before. So, you know, this this amendment, as you said, you know, supports a key goal of ARPA funding, which is to improve our data analytics capabilities. Um, and it's also honestly consistent with uh, the, our oversight committee uh, and uh, the questions that, that I've been asked so during my nominations hearing. Senator Blackburn urged uh, me at the time as a, a nominee to prioritize the use of artificial intelligence and machine learning to address um, product safety hazards. And this project fits right into that, but that they, that she was um, asking us to do so. Uh, with that, uh, I will support this amendment and urge my colleague, colleagues to support it as well. And uh, at this point in time, I turn to Commissioner Bianco. Thank you. I could not support this amendment with more vigor. Um, since the day I walked in the door, uh, I, I have uh, really pushed for better technology and uh, we're still behind the curve. And, and in more, when we're considering technology, the longer we wait to catch up, the longer we're going to be behind. And every project on this list, every project on this list, everything that we do has some, uh, necessitates in some way um, the use of technology. And until this agency is, is somewhat uh, even up to speed with what the rest of the world is doing, we will always be behind the curve. And that is not, um, that is not, a pro um, I, I just can't support not being at that at, at that particular position. Um, so I, I do thank you for raising it. I will continue to to push for this. I'd like to see this agency, you know, get into um, get into the real world, if you will. I feel like our technology is basically right now like using a mimeograph machine from grade school uh, compared to the rest of the world using smartphones and and machine learning and artificial intelligence. So I, I encourage uh, this agency to put as much uh, attention into upgrading the technology. I would ask Congress again uh, to consider that. Um, and I thank you for your amendment and I would support it. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Feldman, did you have questions or comments? Thank you. And I also wanna thank uh, Commissioner Trumka for offering this um, amendment. The 
projects he's proposing uh, may be worthy. However, I, I think they need to be considered as part of a more holistic plan. If we spend this money, this ARPA money piecemeal, I think there's a higher likelihood that we get it wrong. I believe the, uh, the that we increase the potential for waste, fraud, and abuse. Uh, and, and on the, the SAS amendment specifically, I think it may be a worthy project, and I agree with, with much of what Commissioner Biacco just said. The movement towards cloud-based machine learning is a positive one, uh, but it's not clear to me how staff would use this new tool. Given the lack of detail uh, provided, uh, it, it, it makes it difficult to make any sort of concrete determinations about the proposed project. We, we received the response to my question uh, about the additional uh, projects that were left on the cutting room floor uh, just last Friday. Uh, I asked this at the mid-year um, at the at the mid-year uh, meeting and was told that we couldn't see that. Uh, it, staff waited uh, then about another week to actually get this back. We haven't. My office and, and I have not had a chance to really do a deep dive to understand uh, any more than sort of the broad outlines of what this pro project is. Accordingly, I'm a no right now, but I'm happy to revisit this as part of the uh, our, our upcoming op plan discussions and after we've had more time uh, to to to, uh, to to really dive into how this would be operationalized and and what uh, what metrics we're able to show as success. So uh, again, uh, Commissioner Trumka, I, I thank you for uh, for offering this, uh, but uh, appreciate the discussion today. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner. Uh it's your amendment actually. So, um, having, uh, comments. Time concluded, I turn back to you, commissioner Trompka. Do you have any final words before, uh. Going to a vote. No, uh, you know, I, I appreciate the thought, uh, the thoughtful, um, consideration. Um, I think on that last point, we're already using a version of SAS. We're just using a, an older version. And so in terms of what staff can do with it. Uh, it seems pretty clear that it increases capabilities. It speeds up searches. It's going to allow them to use their time uh, instead of sitting around waiting for a query to come back, actually analyzing the data and, and getting more detail on that data. So uh, I, I think maybe we could work together to ensure we're using it effectively once, you know, if, if we do uh, adopt that going forward, but I think it opens up a lot of capabilities. Thank you, commissioner. Uh, at this point in time, we're going to move to a vote. Um, Commissioner Biacco? I vote yes. Commissioner Feldman? I vote no. Commissioner Trumka? Yes. And I will vote yes as well. So the ayes are three, the nays are one, and the amendment uh, by Commissioner Trumka is adopted. Um, Commissioner Trumka, you said you had another amendment as well. I do. Thank you. Um, so the next amendment would allocate $200,000 of the ARPA funds for a consumer behavior study, and it would quote, uh, direct the office of communications in consultation with the division of human factors to conduct a study of consumer behavior regarding recalls and factors relating to consumer willingness to report consumer product injuries, including, but not limited to through the use of focus groups of consumers representative of the U S population. So I think we all know that not enough people uh, or not as many as we'd like are participating in recalls and that keeps dangerous products in circulation. For whatever reason, our message isn't resonating wide enough. And that means we need to change our message using all the tools that we have or, or can acquire. Uh, we need to understand what motivates consumer behavior and this study will help us determine how to do that. And we also need to understand how to make it easier for consumers to tell us about their product injuries and to learn about products causing injury study addresses that as well. And the amendment also speaks directly to another congressional directive from the ARPA bill uh, to increase awareness and communication of consumer product safety information. And it's also another one-time expense that will help us for years into the future. So I ask for your support on the amendment. Uh, is there a second? Second. Hearing a second, I'm going to turn to consideration. Um, so, Commissioner Tromka, thank you for this amendment as well. I agree that we are tasked with trying to figure out not only uh, to identify products that are defective or to work with companies when they identify products that, that need to be recalled because they're unsafe. Um, but the other part of that is figuring out how to get those recalled and appreciate it also in talking with my uh, fellow commissioners 
that you know it, it's a complex issue that goes beyond um, that that deserves uh, consideration not only from a communications perspective but also from from a human factors perspective and how the behavior uh, how consumers act and react. Um, and we need to take that into consideration. So I know the amendment has evolved over time, um, and I think it is better for that. And so um, I am I am supportive in the current form. Um, Commissioner, uh, that with that I turn to Commissioner Biaco. Thank you, and thank you, uh, Commissioner Trumpka, for the amendment. Um, when I first saw the amendment, my initial reaction was, "Gee, we've had focus groups and workshops, and you know, all kind of um, input from." Uh, certain stakeholders about uh, recall effectiveness, if you will. And what I didn't want to see uh, the agency do is spend its limited funds repeating uh, things that we've done in the past that we haven't either to uh, for our for all our fault applied that or for no fault of our own um, not applied that. Um, what I do think is important is for us to understand if a customer or if a consumer is reacting or not reacting in a particular way, why they do that um, or why they don't do whatever it is that we would hope that they would do. And I think there's a, a, a good bit, not a huge amount, but a good bit of literature out there on the consumer behaviors, not just with consumer products, not just with recalls, but in a, in a large um, perspective. And I do think that um, if we take this money and apply it um, to a, a broader way, let's figure out what it is that um, we need to understand from the consumer's point of view, then we can adjust our communications program, our recall program, our saferproducts.gov uh, yeah. website to accommodate for those uh, particular behaviors. And so from that perspective, I think it's necessary and I do appreciate this amendment in its current form. So thank you. I will support it. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner Feldman, do you have questions or comments? Thank you. I also want to thank Commissioner Trumpka for offering this amendment. Uh, again, the projects uh, that, that he's proposing uh, may be worthy. However, I think they need to be considered as part of a holistic plan. I believe CPSC needs a communication plan that explains how we're effectively spending our communications resources, how to measure the return on these investments, including recall effectiveness. This needs to be part of a larger strategy, uh, which is why I'm, I'm voting no today, but remain open to revisiting the project in the future. Uh, so thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, with questions and comments done, I turn back to Commissioner Trumpka to see if you have any final words before we turn to a vote. Sure. Uh, well, first, thank you for Commissioner uh, to Commissioner Biaco for your uh, perspective and institutional knowledge on this that I think made this a better amendment uh, after your input on that. And, and Commissioner Feldman, um, agree with you again. And, and I think that um, we've got a new communications director. I'm very excited. She seems fantastic. And hopefully we'll all work together on that communications plan going forward. I'm sure it's something she wants to do as well. So thank you. All right, with that, we're going to move to a vote on the amendments. Uh, Commissioner Bianco. Yes. Commissioner Feldman. I vote no. Commissioner Trumpka. Yes. I vote yes. So there are three yeses and the noes are one. And the amendment by Commissioner Trumpka is adopted. Um, going to uh, any other amendments at, at this time? Commissioner Trumpka or any of the other commissioners? None for me. Okay. Um, so we're going to turn to the final vote. One thing I just uh, noted um, you know, that uh, Commissioner Feldman had mentioned before about the timing on getting a response to the QFRs on the um, the background on the uh, projects. Uh, I believe that actually circulated on the 20th as opposed to last Friday, which is the Friday before. So I assume that that is what you meant, but just um, flagging. Um, so hearing no additional amendments, I move to approve the staff's draft of the FY22 mid-year and ARPA adjustment plan as adopted. Is there a second? Second. Uh, as amended? As amended. Um, have, uh, we have a second and can move forward to the vote. Commissioner Biaco, how do you vote? I vote yes, thank you. Commissioner Feldman? I also vote yes, thank you. Commissioner Trumka? Yes. 
Can I vote yes as well? That is four uh, yeses, uh, no noes. Uh, at this point in time, the draft um, FY22 mid year and ARPA adjustment plan as amended has been approved. Um, at this point in time, um, as tradition, we go to 10 minutes each for, for us to be able to, to talk about uh, what we have just done. And so I will recognize myself uh, for 10 minutes. So, first of all, I want to thank the CPSC staff, my fellow commissioners and their staff for all the, the effort and the work that went into finalizing this package. Um, as we're, we're closing, I want to reflect upon for a moment the decisions we made here today and our agency's fiscal realities. In the operating plan, which was developed before I arrived at the commission, was predicated on an anticipated appropriations increase of more than $30 million. And that $30 million would have funded important life saving safety work, including new research projects and other efforts that would strengthen and modernize the agency. Plan also built upon the commission's prior decisions with respect to the use of funds provided to CPSC in the American Rescue Plan Act. And unfortunately, staff recognized in their memo the flexibility possible under the prior appropriations assumptions is not possible under our lower $139 million appropriations level that was finalized just this last March. Um, instead, we're being asked to do more with less. Um, with today's vote, I'm pleased that we're continuing to advance CPSC's core mission of protecting consumers. I'm also pleased that the plan, including the amendments that were adopted today, target the key goals of the ARPA legislation, and that's to strengthen our import surveillance and e-commerce monitoring efforts to prevent hazardous products from entering and being sold in the country, to improve consumer outreach and education, particularly with respect to underserved communities, and to strengthen our data collection and analysis so that we can better monitor and regulate the marketplace. As CPSC uses ARPA funding, we must recognize and plan for the post-ARPA world as well. We will need a significant increase in our annual appropriations to support our increased staffing levels and to build this agency as been proposed in our budget request. So my job is clear, and that's to champion the importance of fully funding the life-saving work that Congress assigned to this commission. The work that began under ARPA can't stop once the funding runs out. It's central to our mission and must continue. That means we must work together as commissioners to make the case to Congress to support our critical consumer protection work. I'm optimistic that we'll be able to demonstrate how our agency improves safety for the public every day, and that increasing our budget will support our current staff, uh, to support our current staff will benefit all Americans. So I thank you again and look forward to working with staff, the commissioners, their staffs on funding this agency going forward. That I turn to Commissioner Biaco. Thank you. Um, I'd also like to thank the staff for um, all the work that went into this. And I'd like to uh, particularly thank my fellow commissioners and their staffs for um, the collegial professional um, interaction that we've had on this. I think that it has been an absolute joy to work with all of you and to get this mid year package to where it uh, best could be. Uh, I believe that we did the best that we could with what we had to work with. Um, I do hope that we can work together. I think this particular commission has the candle power and the, um, the passion to work together to see how we can get out there and encourage Congress to uh, recognize the good work that this agency does on a much broader level and uh, help us to continue to move our mission forward uh, in, 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 in ways of funding frankly. Um, and I know we all complain about funding. It seems that every agency and every organization uh, complains about funding. And I do not intend to, it's not my intent to complain about our particular budget rather than um, to encourage uh, those out there who may be listening to um, consider how much uh, this agency could really benefit and the American people could benefit from additional appropriations. So, um, I think I'll, I'll stop there again. Thank you all of you for working together and let's keep moving forward. Thank you, commissioner. Commissioner Feldman. Thank you, Mr. chairman. I, I did have some closing remarks. Uh, 1st, I'd like to thank um, my colleagues for working collaboratively on this process and 
Well, I'm disappointed that uh, we did not vote to fully empower our inspector general. There are a, a number of provisions uh, on which we all agree. Uh, and I'm glad to see this across the finish line. In particular, I'm glad to see uh, my amendment uh, Feldman uh, two adopted as part of the substitute amendment. This ensures uh, support for our FOIA office, which has been troubled historically, but appears to be improving. Uh, the one remaining Feldman amendment that we have not discussed today is uh, uh, Feldman three, which would adopt new timeliness metrics for the OGC FOIA processing. I developed these metrics with our general counsel, and uh, while he is committed to, to work to implement these, given uh, uh, the timing considerations, my in intent with this amendment is to, is to offer and withdraw it. Uh, in instead, I, I understand uh, uh, OGC intends to submit these metrics as part of the fiscal year 23 operating plan, allowing uh, that office to fully implement the metrics that, uh, that they've undertaken in terms of FOIA compliance. And, I, I fully support these efforts. Uh, it, it's important and I appreciate that our general counsel uh, has shared his commitment to implement a meaningful FOIA metric. These timeliness uh, metrics uh, pr propose a, a step in the right direction and improvement of approximately 25% of processing time compared with CPSC's response performance in uh, fiscal 21. I look forward to working with OGC and, and my colleagues going forward. Uh, accordingly, uh, I, I, I didn't offer that that amendment today for for consideration, uh, but uh, but I, again, want to thank everybody for working uh, collaboratively, collaboratively together. I think this is a, a final product that uh, that that we can all share and and be proud of. So thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Trunka. Thank you. Uh, so. You know, today we, we had to make tough decisions about how to best protect consumers from dangerous products and it was a tough task for this mid year. Uh, we've got a shoestring budget to try to keep the country safe and, and I think as, as my fellow commissioners have pointed out, it's a shame when we have to be forced to choose between life saving projects. Um, to our friends in Congress, we are the best investment you can make. So buy low. Um, but I still welcome this opportunity to discuss the future of our agency and our views about how to approach our mission. We should always empower agency staff to be strong advocates for consumer health and health and safety and give them the tools that they need in that work. And I think we did that today. Uh, and it's why I'm so pleased that we approved innovative new tools to assess chronic hazards with the population attributable risk study uh, and why I'm glad that we created new capabilities to gather and analyze data. The plan we, that we approved today will build new capacity to assess risks to disadvantaged groups and any group that might face more dangers from consumer products than others. And it's gonna give us, um, give staff greater ability to analyze data and spot evidence of hazardous products faster, which will save lives. We're not gonna catch every bad actor or every dangerous product, but these tools are gonna to help us identify more and identify them quicker. And when we do, we need to hold them strongly accountable for importing dangerous products, selling them to families, Treating as faulty information or hiding dangers. And the least we can ever do is make sure that we quickly inform the public about hazardous products in ways that people find engaging and can understand. And we're making great strides towards that goal. And I think we've made bigger strides there today. So uh, I'm glad that we'll continue to get better uh, as we uh, approve the consumer behavior study that will allow us to hone our consumer messaging. Across the board, I think we should act with a realistic view of how American consumers interact with products. Even people who don't know about CPSC assume that some unnamed entities out there assuring, you know, that products on store shelves are safe. We don't expect any credit when we succeed, but we certainly um, can expect them to blame us if we fail. So I'm as encouraged as ever that we'll do better in our mission for the remainder of this year, and we'll bring more ideas for improvement as we consider the, the 23 budget coming up. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner, and uh, thanks to all the commissioners and the staff for this process and for bringing it to a close for FY22. Uh, with that, this um, meeting is adjourned. Thanks.